Hello and salutations! My name is John Johnson and welcome to another episode of The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap. In the last episode, I don't remember exactly what we did. What did we do? We got the Pegasus Boots, that's right. And in this episode, we're going to be doing some side quest stuff. Nothing too, too super important, but stuff we need to get out of the way before heading to the next era of the game. But, I actually have a special guest with me today. Please introduce yourself, sir. What's up, guys? My name is Dark Knight Gamer, and, uh, well, I'm glad to finally be able to repay John for, uh, coming on to my Twilight Princess LP a <laughs> bunch of months ago. That was a long yeah, time that ago, was, actually. Yeah, that was, what, like, January sometime? I think, I actually know, because the first time we recorded it, before I messed it up and lost the file, it <laughs> oh, was yeah, the I day of that, the, actually. It was the day of the Super Bowl, so, beginning oh, of well. February. I remember that. That's how, the only reason I remember exactly what day it was. <laughs> Get it down to the exact day. I was but right, anyways, right uh, I'm actually, oh uh, yeah, I'm glad to have you on though. I really am. It's uh, but we've been trying to actually do this for a while, but I've had such crappy internet that I haven't been able to. Yeah, uh, but I was able to finally get some good internet and get this going. Definitely. Now I just need to upgrade my internet so it doesn't take so long for me to do whatever I want to do. At least it's good for this though. <laughs> there you go. All right, so what we're doing here, and uh, unfortunately, Dark Knight or DKG as I'm gonna call him. Uh, Cannot see this, but what I'm doing now is actually something I forgot to do last episode, and that is come to this great fairy here in front of me, again with a lovely pixelated pixel sprite thing, and we're actually going to get an upgrade. I need many rubies right now. She's basically begging for money. She wants us to give us all, our, wants us to give her all of our money, Jeez, and I'm going to do it. Well, yeah, no. ladies always want the money. Jeez, she, she's a gold digger, man. Which yeah. is funny because she's actually gold. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Unfortunately, uh, I've never played Minish Cap, but now that I've been watching your LP, I definitely want to. It's it's actually a lot better than I mean. I remembered it pretty fondly, but I didn't remember a whole lot about it because it's been a long time. It's actually a lot better than even I remembered. Definitely, I'm, not, uh, I'm a huge Zelda fan, but unfortunately, I can say I've never played any of the handheld games. The only uh, Zelda game I've ever owned on a handheld console, or whatever you want to call it, was the Link to the Past port, and then I guess it came with four swords, if that counts, yeah. but never yeah. played it. It's uh, The handheld Zeldas are really hit and miss. They're all good to some degree, but uh, they're a lot of, they have a lot of problems. The big, big example being Phantom Hourglass. You either love or hate Phantom Hourglass. Definitely. Which, I've always I've always wanted to look into them because I've never played them. I've played all the 3Ds and I've played A Link to the Past and the original, but other than like the handhelds, I haven't played. I played most of them, but I want to really get into those. Yeah, Link's Awakening is really good. It's probably one of my favorite handhelds. It took me six years to beat it because I glitched it out and was too stubborn to start a new game. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's definitely one of my favorites. Okay, so uh, something else we're actually gonna do here is now that we uh, we got a larger wallet as you saw I wasn't narrating what was happening there but you guys could see it it was on the screen we got a bigger wallet so that's awesome we're actually gonna come learn some new moves from old swift blade switcheroo here ha! scream like that uh something a little funny is that uh apparently i'm playing uh, i'm playing this in emulator for those that don't know and i do own the game so you know throw that argument out there <laughs> uh yeah. But apparently the emulator version I have is actually a different version than the standard American English one. Because there's a lot a lot of uh, smaller differences in the text and stuff like that. People have pointed out in the comments. Like, uh, this guy isn't named, or he doesn't do a... His move here in my in the recording, as you see, is uh, the switcheroo. And that's actually different from most people's uh, games, which is weird. Kind of cool, though. Yeah, it's always nice when they change like little things of uh, emulators. I've never really experienced much of emulators that for Mother 3 because you can't oh, play yeah. that in English on anything Yet. other than a emulator. So. Now that uh, Earthbound came out and sold as well as it did, hopefully it's going to change pretty soon. Yeah, I, I really hope so because Mother 3 is one of my favorite games. But yeah, it's always nice to see the little nuances that uh, emulators can add or I guess yeah. sometimes subtract, unfortunately. but. Well, I don't, I don't think this is emulator specific because it's not a translation or anything. As far as I know, I just don't know what version it actually is. Oh, okay. Somebody, hopefully, maybe in the comments, somebody will know for sure. All right, so we learned a pot breaker uh, technique, which actually makes it really easy for us to just break pots with our sword. And we're gonna actually learn one more move as well. The uh, that involves the Pegasus boots, which we just got last episode. Yes, I'd like trainers. Come on, sh show me the move, man. Show me the move. Show me your moves. <laughs> I think one of my favorite parts about your LP and watching this so far is that so many shoutouts, especially to like Wind Waker, which is one of my favorite games. It reminds oh, me a yeah, lot of yeah. Wind Waker. It's like a handheld Wind Waker, except no sailing, obviously. But well, I mean, it's, just... it, it's definitely the I won't say spiritual successor because that would be Phantom Hourglass, really. But uh, it's definitely you know art style inspired and everything else. It's a lot, 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 lot of Wind Waker inspiration there. 
Definitely, and I like how uh, Ezlo is not as annoying as Fi, because or Fi, however you want to pronounce <laughs> no. it. No, that's the last Zelda game that I've played was Skyward Sword, and she annoyed the crap out of me. And she was so annoying; it's not even <laughs> funny. Yeah, but he's more, just... more, more so than Navi, I would even go so far as to say. Yeah, because the thing about Fi is she'll be like, "There's a 97% chance that this is." Well, it's like, why don't you just say 100? Because it's <laughs> probably gonna be just right. Ra I'm American. Just round up. Seriously. <laughs> exactly. What is this, the metric system? <laughs> uh, so there we actually learned two brand new sword techniques, so that's cool. We actually do need both of those, too. Well, one of them's not all that important, but the other one is the uh, the, uh, the Pegasus boots. And let's see, what else are we going to do? I practiced this earlier, but I'll be honest with you, I was not paying attention when I was practicing as well as I should have. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to... I'm going to run a lap here real quick. Okay, I know something we can do. Gotta love that. You go and you practice, and then you're like, well, I remember what I was supposed to do, but now I'm recording, and uh, I'm trying to concentrate on what I'm trying to say and do what I'm trying to do on the game, and yeah. I forgot what I was supposed to do. <laughs> well, it's, it's actually, and I just messed up there, but I can fix that pretty easy. It's actually weird because uh, this game has a lot of random circumstances, even more so than I thought. I mentioned in the last episode uh, that red and blue kinstones are the ones that are required to 100% things uh, for the most part. Well, there are certain red and blue consoles that are actually random. So, yeah, there are some heart pieces that I've already got in my practice file that I'm probably not going to be lucky enough to get in this just because of the fact that they are kind of randomly generated. Yeah, so that sucks. That's always unfortunate. Like, I guess I've never really played, like, most of the games I've played, the 3D games, you can just 100%, none of, none of it's really random factor. There's always, yeah, like, yeah. a rhyme or reason to everything. So that's that'd be pretty difficult, actually. I, I didn't, honestly, I didn't think about it when I was uh, planning to do this. I only, because I'm using, uh, I am using a guide to go through this uh, from Zelda Dungeon, actually. We'll shout out to that website. And, uh... On the guide itself, it, it tells you about all the stuff, but it also says, you know, this is kind of random, so you may have to do it later. And I'm like, oh, that's <laughs> going to make planning wonderful. Yeah, exactly. Like, because uh, that's exactly what I use for my Twilight Princess LP as well, except uh, I really like the video walkthrough, so I watched the video walkthrough and just, like, took notes on it. So I have, like, a uh, just 30 pages in a book of just notes of, uh, hey, go here next, and just little yeah. cliff notes and such. I, I used to, for Majora's Mask, I actually had kept a notebook of notes, but for, for the last two or three, or for, for most, mostly since Mega Man, I haven't been doing that, but the thing I kind of forgot is that Mega Man and Yoshi's Island are platformers. You don't really have to take that many notes for those. Uh, Zelda, on the other hand, tends to be a little bit more goal-oriented. So Definitely. we're gonna have to. I'm gonna have to work on that. So there, there's gonna be some things I know I'm gonna forget, and near the end of the LP, I'm li likely to have uh, just one or two episodes of just random collection that I wasn't able to do until then. Yeah, most of the time you actually have to do that and when you're trying to, especially when you're trying to 100% a game, especially a Zelda game, like there's just so much stuff that you gotta do that it's just like, well, yeah. I guess I'll have three videos at the end of my LP, like, hey, here's this bonus stuff that we didn't get in the playthrough <laughs> because it was hard just, to get. And some stuff is just hard to time, too. Like uh, somebody mentioned in a comment earlier, uh, I saw earlier today, uh, about the figurines in this game. This game has a little figurine system much like uh, Wind Waker had. Oh, yeah. And, you know, they're asking me if I was going to do that, and I was like, well, you know, I, I do want to get all the figurines because I want to, you know, 100% this. But it's like, lady, get out of the front of the door. I can't walk in the door. Thank you. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> She's just blocking me completely. Uh, I do want to 100% this and get all the figurines, but the figurines, on top of being random, you actually have to beat the game in order to get all of them in the first place. So I'm going to have uh, to beat the game and then probably come back in a bonus episode and, and put them all up there. Alright, so what we're doing now, let me explain this, because this is what screwed me over in uh, my practice file, because this little chick chickadee right here I'm in front of wants to trade uh, or fuse kinstones with me, which is something else we're going to be doing a lot of in this episode, probably. Uh, this is one of the few random redstone generations in the game. Uh, somebody in Hyrule Town is going to fuse a red kinstone with you, and it'll give you a piece of heart. But it's random. A lot of the time, it is this chickadee in front of me, but it looks like this time it's going to be Ruby, so uh, it doesn't look like I'm going to be lucky. Nah, it'll be a red kinstone if it's a piece of heart. So that means at some point during the LP, I get to go around all of Hyrule Town and just talk to everybody and find out where crap is. Yay. Yeah, you could, just, uh, you could just go knock on doors and be like, hey, do you have a red kinstone to trade? Because I really need a heart piece, so hey, yeah. let's do this. Let's fuse this together now. Apparently, though, according to the guy, that is the only quote-unquote randomly generated heart piece in the game, so the rest of them should be a bit easier to plan. That's and the heart good. pieces are the main thing I'm worried about. 
Yeah, definitely, because it's always good to get all the health books, yeah. or all the hearts, or whatever you want to call it. But yeah, you can uh, you can be that annoying guy that comes up to the door and be like, Hey, I, uh... You wanna Do you have a moment to talk about your lord and, and <laughs> goddesses? Creators of Hyrule? <laughs> Do you want to go talk about this fairy fountain? I had a wonderful experience with this fairy fountain, and now I am <laughs> seeing the light, and uh, I would like to share that with you right now. Oh, uh, man. And then they can put up the no soliciting sign, and you can just disregard it, because, hey, who cares? It's soliciting anyway, but I don't care. The Lord sent exactly. me, so I can solicit if I want to. Alright, so here we're refusing Ken Stone with his dog, and uh, if this is the same thing he did in my practice file, which I think it will, then... No, it didn't. Oh, yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. Excuse me. There's, there are so many... I got so confused during my practice file, because there are so many... Uh, different kinstones and stuff like that to fuse that and they do some of them do random things and it's kind of annoying uh that one there though as you saw it actually put up a little golden snake in one of the the further south areas of hyrule uh oh hey look a little minish what do you got to say ghost or scary good good observation there thank you for that <laughs> yeah the, uh, usually things you can't really see are pretty scary yeah i don't know how would i would have lived my life without knowing that fact thank you so much but no uh that little golden snake it put down if we go and attack it it takes a minute to beat it takes like I think 20 hits or something like that, uh, but it actually gives us 50 rubies, and we're actually gonna go need to do that because there's something we need to spend 300 rubies on this, which we're off 50 short of. But anyways, you gotta be the high, bleeding, deadly, level, blood, whatever. <laughs> I'm seriously gonna run out of ideas on how to make those weirder. Yeah, definitely. At this point, I just kind of devolve into to random gibberish. Yeah, uh, hey, it's, it keeps working, so as long as it works, that's good. <laughs> All right, so let's see. Now that we did that, we can actually go and visit Link's home and talk to our granddad Smith. Aw, it's always we, good to go home. Yeah, we can talk to our granddad. He's not gonna do crap for us except uh, a few skin stones, though. Oh, okay. But still, it's cool. Yeah, home is where the heart is, so you always gotta go visit home. Every even Link in his adventures has to get homesick a little bit. I mean, come on, he's just—I'm assuming he's a little uh, like a ten-year-old or so again in this game, yeah, or is he something like that? Okay, I assumed he was just younger, because that's what it like, seems like in all the handhelds. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm assuming, like, Wind Waker-ish age, and I think, uh, how old was he in Wind Waker? 10 or 13? I can't Honestly, remember. Honestly, he was, like, 10, 12, 13, somewhere in there. I know he was about, I think he was supposed to be the same age as young Link in Ocarina of Time, wasn't he? I'm not entirely sure. Something mm -hmm. similar to that. Young Link in Ocarina of Time always looked uh, more like, oh, no, I don't want to quit, you stupid granddad. Jeez. Fuse <laughs> the dang Kinstone. Thank you. <laughs> And this one actually is uh, important because it gives us a brand new bottle. And I didn't mention it earlier when we were doing it because I was busy talking about something else. But uh, when we went behind the shopkeeper earlier, uh, he gave us a bottle of dog food and told us to go feed his dog. We're going to do that again in this episode, and that's going to give us another uh, empty bottle. So we're going to get two empty bottles in this episode. That's, that's amazing. That's awesome. Nice. I always like the empty bottles because you can, well, obviously hold stuff and it comes in handy, especially when you're first time playing a Zelda game. I tend to die every once in a while because it's challenging at first. Yeah. I see Tingle up there. I see him waiting on me and I'm going to leave him alone because I hate Tingle, <laughs> as everyone should. I and actually, think... I don't remember his purpose. Oh, hey, look, there's this thing. I don't remember I... his purpose in this game yet, but I'm assuming it involves either A, being a thief and stealing money, or B, selling maps, either way. It's and still annoying. Both of them are probably same or similar, because he's going to sell you a map that you probably could have figured out anyway, because yeah. Tingle is a horrible, horrible man who steals all of your rupees, and nobody likes him, so he can go drowned in the ocean in Wind Waker, because he is horrible. Indeed. <laughs> so there we got uh, 50 rubies from killing that there snake there, so that's awesome. And uh, what we're going to do now is not actually that. that we're not going to do that. <laughs> We already did that. I was about to go get the wallet upgrade again for some reason. What we're going to do now is uh, head up to Lon Lon Ranch. Took me a minute to remember where I was going. All right, and we got a few few new things we can do over here since we got the uh, the Pegasus eye, Pegasus boots. Nothing again, nothing major. All this this entire episode is just like little side quest stuff before we go to the uh, the new area. I think the so. Pegasus boots are one of my favorite. I think they need to bring those to the 3D Zeldas because uh, in Link to the Past, it just makes everything so much faster, just being able to run everywhere. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, I know they usually have like a mode of transportation, like an animal, like a horse or something, like in Ocarina of Time and Twilight Princess, but it'd be sweet to have just the Pegasus boots for when you're running and you can't take Epona into like a dungeon or something. It'd be nice to have those. I think they should bring it to the 3D games. I've always kind of wondered how. Uh, actually, hold on a second. I gotta get in interrupt myself. You gotta be the high clap on, uh, clap on, make me high clap, energy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
I have to do it. It's required. Definitely. Uh, I remember a while back I was on the Zelda Universe forums and uh, actually a thread came up about trying to uh, put the Pegasus boots in 3D Zelda. And uh, there's a lot of actually really good suggestions on how to do it. Not so much how, because I mean it'd be easy just to make a, a, an item called the Pegasus boots and, and all that, but the hard part would be making them useful. And uh, there's actually a lot of good suggestions. I'll, I may try and go bring up that uh, that old thread and see if I can post it in the comments or in the uh, the description. So here we are in this lovely little house, and Doggy there is waiting on his food, which we forgot to pick up. Oh my god, I'm so stupid. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go back to Hyrule Town and cut and meet you back here. Be back in a minute. I can't believe I forgot to pick up the freaking dog food. <laughs> <laughs> like seriously, uh. what is wrong? <laughs> I rarely get the compass, unfortunately. <laughs> Wait a minute, where the hell is the dog food at? I have no idea. I don't have it in my, uh... Oh, it's freaking in my inventory! Jeez! <laughs> Good! Ugh. It wasn't where the other bottles were, so I... <laughs> well, I'm gonna put that little bit in. Alright, so we're back. And I did something stupid, and I'm probably gonna leave it in because it was pretty dang funny. Not gonna lie. Turns out we had the dog food all along, and I just stupid and didn't look on the menu in the right place. But that's okay. No harm, no foul. Now we have three empty bottles. There. <laughs> <laughs> Only a few things left to do. Uh, again, mostly small things, and I haven't been really explaining much about what I'm doing, but most of it's pretty, pretty small stuff, and uh, you can pretty, pretty easily see what I'm doing without me having to explain it. You know, nothing, there's been no story advancement or anything like that, so I don't feel particularly bad about doing anything. Yeah, it was like, yeah. uh, when you were on my Twilight Princess one, I was just, I, I don't think I said anything about the game the entire time. I think I interjected <laughs> like twice, and the rest of it was just us rambling about Zelda games and what our favorites are. I mean, that, that, like that's, that. yeah, that's what's fun about Kokoming, though. Uh, exactly. So the first thing we're going to do is try and find the mailman, which may turn out to be harder than you think, because he tends to run around everywhere. But we know he's going to pass through here somewhere. And we're actually going to find him because we can fuse a kinstone with him. Now, what the reward for this uh, fusion is, is pretty worthless, at least for me. Uh, you basically get, it's called, a, I believe it's called like the sword, Swordsman Newsletter letter or something like that. But it'll unlock it out of the post office and... They basically have like little tidbits of information and help with the game and all that. Which is it's actually pretty helpful, but since I am using a guide to 100% this, it's kind of pointless for me. Oh, there he is. But I am going to uh, to just do it just to show it off and all that. I don't know what's with Zelda games. Assuming that postmen are just super energetic. You got the guy in Twilight Princess that runs everywhere, and I guess this guy runs places. Yeah, I hate that guy. Yeah, I just uh, every time knows. he came up to me, I just wanted to shoot him. But Link doesn't do that, so. I will but, admit, I like his theme though. Oh yes, definitely, definitely. Speaking I of themes, I love that uh, every time at Long Lawn Ranch when you talk to uh, Malin, that she has the Epona. Song. Oh, the little jingle! I'm actually standing right next to her. I'm gonna go do that now. I right, see. I'm psychic. I could just tell. I knew you were gonna go talk to her, <laughs> <laughs> or you were by her. Oh, I love it. And we can actually fuse Kinstones with her. So let's let's not do that actually uh, because I don't think we have the items that we need to, to finish that so I'm gonna leave that there and she's not going anywhere she's gonna sit there in town square selling milk all by herself what we're actually gonna do is head up to Hyrule Castle because there is yet another ow don't shoot me you stupid Dr. Ock uh, there's yet another heart piece we can get really quick and uh, I'll go ahead and mention it uh, earlier in the episode I mentioned that uh, there is a randomly generated heart piece with a red kinstone what that randomly generated heart piece fusion will do is actually uh, drain this little pond right here, and it'll be a little hole you can drop down, and there's basically a piece of heart down there. So, kind of pointless for us right now, but just for the record. Just for the record. It's destroying so lakes here, I guess, or ponds. Yeah, <laughs> really, pretty much. So here we are, and uh, I don't remember this dude's name. It's not Swiftblade, that's the other guy. I think it's like... Greyblade? You got found Grimblade! There we go. I was close. If you train me, blah blah blah, but he can't see because the room's dark. Oh well, who cares? We got a heartbeat. You got Peter Hart, now you get to be clicking middle lap man. I'm just gonna start like busting into a song and <laughs> all those. Hey, it works. I would do that too. I, I'm, I'm jealous that I didn't think of doing that when I got heart pieces in Twilight Princess. I mean, I wanted to do something because it seems like everybody that does a Zelda LP has some kind of a special way to to, uh, to collect either items or heart pieces or something like that. 
And I wanted to do something, but I was too lazy to try and think something up. So I was in my first, uh, the first art piece I got in Majora's Mask, I think. It was the first time I did that. I was just in recording, I was like, I don't really know what to do, so I'm just going to make some crap up. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much how most of the funniest things in LPs happen. You're just like, oh, well, I'm at a loss of what to say, so I'm just going to make something up here. Here we yeah. go. That's the beauty about live commentary. Exactly, and that's why I would never do it any other way, because you don't catch the just random stuff that you can say or do when you're doing live commentary. Yeah, exactly. Now, I will say that, that post-commentary has its place, and there are people out there who I've watched, and they're very good. You know, I really enjoy watching their LPs, but they're noticeably better at post-commentary than, than live commentary. And uh, uh, I think good one is actually this uh, TF2 player. I can't remember his name. Star or something. I can't remember his full his full username, but he's he does really good uh, commentary. But he's he's done both live and uh, post commentary, and his post commentary is just so much better. Yeah. See, the thing is, for me, if I do post commentary, I just end up saying, "Well, here's what we're doing now, and then now, and then now," and it's just pretty much a walkthrough. Which I mean, sure, people can do let's plays that are walkthroughs, and that's perfectly fine if that's what you're good at. But I don't really think that's what my best suit is of doing. Yeah. So I just don't. Prefer, I prefer not to do that because that's not my preferred style of let's play to watch either. Is just uh, like, hey, I'm going to do this and this and this, and then I don't just add anything that's other than just a walkthrough, which somebody could find somewhere else, and they'd probably do it a bit better than me because I'm not the best at video games. Yeah, I'm the, I'm the same way. Uh, what we're doing now is actually buying a new item. This is what we needed those 300 rubies for. The boomerang, which unfortunately, uh, unlike Link's Awakening, is not a super overpowered, mega awesome tool of death. Unfortunately, <laughs> I always love the boomerang in every game, even in a Link to the Past. It's, I mean, it's not the most useful, but it's still pretty useful in Link to the Past. But like, especially in Ocarina of Time, I was just oh, so yeah. upset as a kid when you get the boomerang and then like you just you're now you're an adult and you can't even use it. And I was like, why can't Link use a boomerang as an adult? It doesn't make any sense to me. What is hands too big to hold the boomerang or what? Like, I don't yeah, understand. That, that's actually a pretty good question. Why did they limit stuff like that? I wonder. I mean, some stuff like the slingshot I can understand because it's kind of pointless when you get the bow and arrow. <laughs> But yeah, like, like I don't know. Like I guess like I don't know because when you get the well, hook shot, I guess the maybe... boomerang was yeah the boomerang was more replaced by the hook shot. Now I think about it, so I can kind of see why they did that now. I I can too, but I just I just really like the boomerang. Like they could have. Uh, I think that's probably why they made it have a secondary like the wind or whatever in Twilight Princess. Oh yeah, it made it probably... something a little more unique. Yeah, but like the boomerang boomerang in Wind Waker, that one was that was awesome. I love the boomerang in Wind Waker. It's yeah. one of my favorite items. So here we are. Uh, we went back to Mount Popcorn Colonel Caramel, and we <laughs> found this uh, this little cave on the far north side of the base. And what we're gonna do is use the uh, the new split power that we got a few episodes back to open this door. And here we find yet another swords trainer. Uh, don't believe we can? Oh yeah, we can actually do some with him. Let's do that real quick. Believe now, I tell you, I'm true master. So there are like five of these guys. This is Gray Blade. Actually, I don't I don't think there are five of them. There's a lot of them. They all look the exact same. They're probably all related. So he's going to be teaching us the roll attack. It's The roll attack is fun, and it's it's kind of impressive looking, especially exactly what it says. You just roll forward and stick your sword out when you come back up. But it's not at all practical. It's one of those things that's really good in concept, but not so much in, in actual practice, unfortunately. So yeah. yeah, there's that. There's definitely some of those, kind of like even some of the hidden skills in Twilight Princess. It's like, yeah, I mean, sure, but like when they wasted a hidden skill on the shield attack, like it's like, uh, yeah, yeah. why do you have to waste this as something you teach me? Couldn't this just be something I pick up, like, hey, in the middle of the game, like, hey, this is what you can do, but they wasted a hidden skill on it and it kind of yeah. made me angry. I think they just wanted to like flesh it out some more. So there we got 100 rubies for doing that, so that's pretty cool, but more importantly, you gotta be the HUD, you're not the Gladry one marker, you're alive and you're <laughs> Alright, so that's the, uh, we have one more thing to do, possibly, and I say possibly because it's yet another, uh, I won't say randomly generated, but it's another red, uh, red, red kinstone fusion, and, uh, one I'm not entirely sure I have a kinstone to do with, but we're gonna go find out just in case. Uh, over here is a shortcut to the, the Malari's Mines, which is actually where we're heading, we're going to see Malari himself. I really like the dungeon designs and just the overworld design of this game from watching your LPs. Like, it just seems like, in some of the skills, I think they could just really transfer these to the 3D games and it would kind of like spruce I, them up a little bit more. I would love to see a 3D Zelda game in the Minish, in the Minish cap 
universe. That would be awesome to me. A 3D representation of some of the areas in this game would be awesome. Exactly. Like, when, especially when you're Minish and, like, you see, like, when you were getting that shoe in part, I believe that was 8 or what, episode 8 or whatever. Yeah, the last and, episode. Yeah, and you're just standing on uh, on his desk and that shoe was just, like, just the different and the blades of grass in the first place. It just was awesome. I think yeah. that'd be great. The, the graphic design in this game is great. So we're going to fuse some kinstones with this guy, or try to, anyways. Hey, look at that. We actually have it. Two kinstones fit perfectly. That's wonderful. Now, I didn't actually do this in my practice file because I didn't have this kinstone. So, this may be a little bit of an adventure. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. You gotta like when uh, uh, things are different from your practice file. It's, it always yeah. happens. It's inevitable. It's just gonna happen. Especially uh, yeah, when you can't help it, too. That's the best part. So, that's quite a ways away. So, I may end up fast forwarding that. If you remember, that is the, uh, the top, the northwest corner of uh, Mount Popcorn. And, uh,. We're actually going to be heading that way to get, climb that beanstalk that just came up. So I'm probably going to cut and then see you guys there because this episode's already at 30 minutes. Well, with all that some of the stuff cut out, it's still about 20. So I'm going to I'm going to cut to that and I will see you there in a moment. Teleport. All right, so here we are at the beanstalk. So let's make like Jack and climb it. Oh, Jack you stole my joke. I was going to hope. I was hoping. To oh, go it's for a that beanstalk, one. man. Come on. <laughs> it had to be a Jack and the Beanstalk joke. Definitely. Right. So up here we have a crap ton of red rubies, 120 I do believe, and more importantly, you gotta be the high, you completely hook the life and blame for and great. Yay. Wonderful. <laughs> awesome. And we are actually walking on a cloud. I am on cloud nine right now, literally. But uh, we are actually going to call it right there because we got a good bit accomplished in this episode. Again, mostly just small side quest stuff, but I mean, I think we actually got two more heart containers. Definitely. Uh, yeah, we got two more full heart containers in this episode. That That is an accomplishment, and I'm going to call it there. So, uh, I'd like to thank my, my special guest here, uh, DKG. Uh, uh, thank, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it, and uh, I'm glad I could finally repay you, like I said, for the video we did like four months ago or six months ago, <laughs> however long it was. I did, no problem. Everybody that is watching this, go. I'm going to put a link to his channel in the subscription. Or not in the subscription, in the uh, description, excuse me. Go watch your stuff, subscribe, it's awesome. Good stuff. Good stuff. Alright, and uh, so as always, like if you like, leave a comment, tell me what I did right, what I did wrong, subscribe if you want to see more, and share with friends. I'll see you next time in The Legend of Zelda, The Minish Hat. Bye. <laughs> Say bye to the kids, DKG. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> uh,